If this program is about the voice, as Jesse J is fond of reminding us, then I should close the door to my teaching studio because obviously I don't know what I'm talking about. The Australian public at large, however, having been trained to recognise an easy sell by the all-knowing producers of TV talent shows, do know what they like. And this season, they like young, underdeveloped, artistically immature singers who will lose their flavour quicker than a pellet of juicy fruit chewing gum. Harsh, but true. Hello, my name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist and every week I work with between 30 to 40 individual voices as they diligently apply the countless hours of work required to craft and hone the human voice into a presentable art form ready for public consumption. This approach of persistence stands in con stark contrast to what we've witnessed over the past nine weeks. TV talent shows offer a young artist an opportunity to skip all that hard work and go straight to the top. To those who don't quite make the finals, the consolation prize of exposure is offered as an alluring incentive. Of course, a moment of critical thought quickly exposes the promise of exposure as fraudulent because who wants to pay money to watch an artist who didn't win first prize, especially when I can wait until the next TV talent show presents another host of hopefuls ready to be viewed from the comfort of my lounge chair, or for the princely sum of free to air. Dr. Dan, you're such a cynic, I hear you say. Well, maybe I am. Or maybe I'm just sick and tired of watching the Australian artistic intelligence being systematically eroded by a money-hungry tabloid format that insults each and every one of us. Maybe I believe it doesn't have to be this way. Maybe I see a music industry in Australia that can rise above this debased practice of sending young people to the public slaughterhouse that is app-driven voting. Maybe I see young people being schooled into the understanding that celebrates the journey of 10,000 hours. And maybe I see a creative landscape that promotes more than poorly performed pop and instead nurtures an array of popular culture musics. Maybe, just maybe, I'm a realist who believes that commercially vested interests are slowly but surely sucking the oxygen out of an industry that already struggles in a culture dominated by sports and celebrity. Yes, my reviews contain a healthy amount of cynicism, but they do so in direct and equal balance to my vision and realist-based outlook for a better platform for emerging Australian artists than the current TV talent show programs offer. Okay, enough ranting, on with the review. This week I want to critique our only remaining female contestant. There's no disputing this young lady's sense of musicality. Ellie's most certainly a talented young lady. So everything that follows should not be heard as dismissing her obvious qualities as a young singer. Nevertheless, let's commence our review by listening to Ellie's blind audition when she sang Adele's Take It All. Okay, now let's listen to her performance from Sunday night of Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl. Firstly, these two performances provide us with a then and now look at Ellie's voice. Both performances are delivered with a single instrument accompaniment, one with piano and one with guitar. And both songs are fairly thin in their arrangement, so we can hear exactly what the voice is or is not doing. What I hear when I listen to both of these performances is a young voice that is starting to show the strains of a vocal load that it's not ready for. Okay, let's get technical. In the blind audition piece, Ellie's voice is stylistically on the money. It moves freely across the notes, but it lacks what I refer to as a core tone. A clean core tone is necessary for healthy, sustainable singing because it's generally produced with a forward placement that sits the sound up and off the larynx. A skillful singer can always revert to a clean core tone when the voice is feeling sick or tired. Now interestingly, in the second piece from Sunday Night, we hear a sound that has a little more focus to the tone, 
but the focus is not being produced easily. The voice is desperately trying to etch out an easier pathway for the sound, but unfortunately, it's achieving it via a narrowing of the pharyngeal space, the back of the throat. This cheap technical imitation is leading to some supraglottic constriction, which sounds cool aesthetically, but ultimately it's causing a wear and tear to Ellie's overall vocal health. Simply, a 16-year-old voice is not anatomically ready for high-level use. Ellie's voice runs the risk similar to that of a premature baby whose arrival is months before its due date. Yes, we will all celebrate her birth, but I foresee developmental challenges down the road for a voice that was exposed to the harsh realities of the industry way too early. This review of Ellie's two performances stands in direct contrast to the continuous rhetoric being fed to us by the show. Ellie hasn't developed vocally during her time on the show. If anything, she's gone backwards. So what do you think of Ellie's journey? Do you think she has benefited from the TV talent show process? Let us all know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me reiterate that I think Ellie shows a lot of promise artistically, but she needs another 10 to 15 years to develop into the wonderful artist I think she has the potential to be. I think she'll get the opportunity to embrace that time-based development when she doesn't win next week. That's right folks, you heard it here first. Ellie will not win the fourth season of The Voice Australia. Neither will Liam for that matter. I think it'll come down to a coin toss between Joe and Nathan. I've already made my prediction that Nathan will be the ultimate winner for 2015, so I'll stick with that forecast. But really, your guess is as good as mine. Regardless of who wins, we won't be choosing from amongst the strongest voices to compete this year. It really is farcical how many good voices have been discarded along the way this season, not to mention the most recent two eliminations in Caleb and Naomi. I can't say I wasn't surprised, but to lose all four of my remaining picks in one night was, well, how would you say it, the, the day the music died? To close episode nine, I'm happy to announce that the reinstatement of Dr. Dan's pick of the week. I'm even happier to award it to Naomi for her stellar performance of A House Is Not A Home. Melodically, this was a challenging piece, yet she still managed to rise above the technical challenges and communicate the song. I can honestly say Naomi got to me with this performance. Naomi is the real deal, people. Well, one week left. Next week, we crown the winner of season four. Who will it be? Be sure to leave your predictions in the comments section below. Finally, remember that you still have the opportunity to win a professional microphone valued at $150. All you need to do is subscribe to the Voice Essentials YouTube channel, like, share and comment on the fifth chair videos for your chance to win. The most active subscriber will win the mic, so make sure you watch next week's final episode when I'll announce the winner of the microphone and sign off from the fifth chair for the final time by saying, I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.